Hello and welcome back to our World of Warcraft Arena World Championship. We already are done with the first game and I gotta say that was an incredible series so I hope the second one is gonna follow suit and I, I'm, I'm really pumped, I'm really excited. How about you guys here? Are you, are you awake? Are you with me? Nice! Wonderful. So for everyone who just tuned in or for everyone who just sat down, let's take a look once more at the groups so we know who we're going to see today. And there they are, Group A and a Group B. Group A is uh, already topped by skill cap. They're already waiting in the semi-finals. Where is in Group B? We have Bleach Bones who are already waiting. Both of those teams will be playing tomorrow. So let's take a quick look at the schedule so we see what more we're going to see today. As we do have the second game coming up in just a bit. And that's going to be Push Push, the Korean team, going up against uh, the lovely guys from Death Innovators. So that's definitely going to be an interesting series. And that will be followed by Penny for Your Thoughts going up against the winners from the first game. And that's, of course, Three Amigos. And last but not least, we're going to have the guys from Playing With Fire going up against whatever team is going to win this very series. So still a lot of action to come. Still a lot of ahead, uh, ahead of us today. And I'm, I'm really, really excited. So I would say, without any further ado, let's get the first team onto the stage. So please give a warm applause for the guys from Korea. Push Push! And now, welcome to the stage, their opponents, Death Innovators! Awesome shirts. <laughs> Perfect. So we got our guys ready. So let's uh, have a quick word with both of the team captains uh, starting over here. Once more, of course, we have a translator helping out. So thank you very much for that. Um, I really have to say, a lot of people didn't really give the Asian scene that much credit up until now. Push Push really showed amazing games previous to this event. Are they confident that they can actually take the whole thing? He said he knows that Asia teams are very um, not noticed among audiences, but he's here on the stage and he's very ready to face North American teams and he's pretty confident that his team will lead to the victory. That is great to hear, and we're so happy to have you guys here, and I can't wait to see, to see them playing. Now, they seem very confident. How about you guys? Are you happy going up against Push Push now, and do you think you can take it? Oh, yeah. We got practice against their comp, so we're ready. We're going to win it. We're going to win it. For USA. For USA. They're going to win it. So we have a good match ahead of us. Thanks a lot for joining me. Good luck to both of those teams, and uh, we are ready to go. So let's hand it over to our casters in just a bit. Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back, and we are ready as well. This game is going to be so sick. Uh, the Korean team, you know, talking to a lot of the players, uh, this is the team that they actually feel is the most impressive team in the tournament. You know, I personally thought that, um, you know, Skillcap to you was the heavy favorites after after last week, you know, just based on the performances. Of course, you know, it comes down to matchups and stuff as well, what kind of brackets we do see. Uh, but the players were all raving about these guys. You know, Skillcap to you, Three Amigos, uh, and pretty much every team that I talked to was were just talking about, uh, you know, the, the coordination and teamwork for this team was displaying, they were blown away um, you know, by just how, how good they were. So, you know, definitely really impressive stuff uh, from them, you know, in the war games that we saw, you know, yeah. you know practicing, and as well as in their series against uh, Bleach Bones. They oh, yeah. barely lost. It was a 3-2, uh, and a lot of people were thinking that that was probably the toughest matchup for them in this tournament. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, and it was incredible watching Coding play that Resto Druid and keep his team barely alive, crazy deep into dampening. Yeah. 
Yeah, and they almost won. They were playing uh, Warrior Mage Druid into the uh, the Moonkin uh, Warlock Shaman team of Bleach Bones. They almost won on uh, Blade's Blade Edge. Edge. That like, was so Down close. to 10% and 5% on the Moonkin a couple yeah. times. It's just... It's just ridiculous. Like, how do you do that as Warrior Mage Druid? Apparently Push Push knows how. Yeah. Uh, so we'll see what they can do against uh, Death Innovators here. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, that, that series really was down to a razor's edge. Yeah. Uh, Laser Chicken was, was living with, like, no HP over and over every single oh, game. Yeah. So that was insanely close and definitely disappointing for them to, to get knocked down in this series. But they are going to be going up against uh, Death Invaders, who is a, you know, a very impressive team of their own. But now we do have... Uh, these guys right on the screen is going to be Push Push. That is the Korean team, and as we can see, it is going to be Coding playing the Druid, Yun Yun on the Mage, and it's going to be Young on the Warrior. Yeah, again, these guys have just been playing absolutely fantastically. Like you were saying, all of the other teams are really thinking that these guys are, are possibly the team to watch out for, so uh, we're just going to have to see how well they can bring it against Death Innovators in this match that just... I don't know what else I can say about the, the play that we've seen from these guys so far. It's just, like, it's it's crazy how they're able to pull this stuff off. Yeah, I, I mean, I think Death Innovators is going to be stiff competition as well. You know, Maldiva sounding very confident in that uh, pregame interview. Uh, the war games that I saw, you know, this was a, a few days ago, so things, you know, can obviously change very quickly uh, as you do figure out the correct strategies. But, I mean, they were very close games, extremely close, uh, but it was the Korean team that was coming out on top in, in almost all the, the, the pregames that I did see. Wow. So uh, it's definitely going to be interesting. But once again, they were extremely close games and you never know what a team is hiding in these practice games if they're really going all out but now on the screen is death innovators your representatives from north america it's going to be dorothy playing the shaman or probably playing the hunter rather casca on the shaman and it's going to be maldiva on the warlock yeah a very interesting composition we haven't seen a ton of this actually why they call themselves hls sometimes is it's the hunter lock shaman yep. sort of thing so uh gonna be it, it's been interesting to watch them so far very very hybrid composition they do have a good amount of burst damage but they're also able to pull back and be defensive when they want to be so uh I'm, I'm i'm excited for this match it looks like we're going to be getting underway here very shortly uh can't wait to see what these teams have in store for us yeah, you know, HLS definitely, you know, it, it's a powerful team. It has a lot of CC, a lot of it is instant C, thanks uh, yeah. large in part to, to the Hunter. Uh, but they have good spread pressure, they have good control, they can play those long games. So it's very versatile comp, uh, definitely could go either way. We'll see what these two teams are going to bring to the table. Uh, Dorothy, you know, probably going to be playing survival because this Hunter has SV in the name. I'm guessing that is going to be a survival <laughs> stack Hunter. I mean, uh, this, we'll could see. Be, this could be the curveball. Yeah. <laughs> Where he yeah. names himself SV, but he doesn't play it. Those <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, we will find out, guys. This is going to be game number one. It is Push Push going up against Death Innovators. It's the lower bracket. Lose and you go home. Win. And you have a chance at that $120,000 first place prize. A lot on the line here. Let's hear it for these two teams. And so we are going to be following the great warrior, Hope from Young. A lot of Warrior players are excited to see the fact that there is going to be a Warrior at BlizzCon. And uh, just immediately we see Dorothy right out of the gate. Looks like he is going to be playing Survival. Yeah, and I mean, they did stop the gateway from Maldiva. He does get storm bolted immediately by Young. Now he's going to get locked out on his fear. They're going to go aggressive battle stance already from Young. He really wants to get the pressure on Maldiva. Remember, he has no gateway. He ports out of there. He's trying to turn it around, but we'll see if he's going to be able to do so. Young Young taking quite a bit of damage here. Casca already having to pop a sentence, so trying to heal through this. Young really putting the pressure up here. Young uh, Young is taking quite a bit of damage himself, though. Getting forced back. We see that it is explosive shot, so yes, indeed. Uh, he is playing Survival, and the spread pressure is going to be very heavy here. Coding already having to pop Heart of the Wild. Really wants to uh, keep his team topped off. The early uh, innervate going to come out from him as well. Knowing mana could be an issue later on. Yeah, and these guys are already push push doing great job transitioning between pillars, moving with their healer, uh, which is very difficult as WMD because the, obviously the warrior has to be in melee range the entire time. So doing a great job of keeping each other alive and, and in position for each other, doing a whole bunch of damage down onto Maldiva there, trying to do uh, yeah. anything that they can, but uh, Casca doing a good job of keeping his team alive. Yeah, Yonion -Yon able to eat the trap there for coding, but coding actually not dispelling that, so it must have been on cooldown. Uh, but still, Maldiva needs to go for the gateway. I can't believe he hasn't tried to pull back and get one just yet. I mean, not having that is huge. We do see that there's a deep freeze onto Dorothy. Oh, They're going to be spreading the pressure him. over onto him. And yeah, he does get interrupted once again. We do see that the shockwave now over onto Dorothy. Uh, the orb does come out. Yun Yun still taking a lot of damage here, though. Uh, Casca, you know, doing pretty well on mana, considering Yun Yun actually the one forced into the ice block here. So even without this gateway, uh, you know, Death Innovator is doing very well. The Voidwalker actually putting out a fair bit of damage. Did get the disarm over onto Young. And we do see Maldiva now down about half HP, trying to pull back a little bit. Still, no CC really able to come out on the 
Casca because of the immense amount of pressure that Dorothy's putting out onto Yun Yun. Oh, Yun's actually running the uh, Root Interruption Glyph, and there we go, Recklessness on two. That's a lot of cooldowns coming out of Yun right now. Look at the damage onto Maldiva. Yeah, he is down to below half HP, had to trigger there as well, dropped the Shadow Fury defensively. Now, Dark Regen does come out from Maldiva. There's the full ring onto Casca. Casca gonna sit through this. He will be able to for now, but the Sheep over onto Dorothy. A massive NS crit from Casca there with the Dark Regen is gonna bring him right back to full, but now look at Yun Yun. Yun Yun is trying to pull back, even using the, the healing touch with the Symbiosis, trying to top himself back off, and he is trying to stay alive, but this may be his second block having to be used here as he gets lower and lower. Coding Destiny trying to top him back up, but he's not able to do it just yet. Down 100k, still holding onto the block. Very risky oh. play. Uh, actually could have gone down there easily had there been one or two more crits. Coding does his spell off the dots, but the nice explosive trap from Dorothy knocks Yun Yun off the pillar. Now the Shockwave over onto Maldiva. We see Stormbolt over onto Dorothy. Yun Yun still sitting so low. Coding just really struggling to heal through this. He does not seem to be able to deal with the pressure. Yeah, Yun Yun trying to get a Polymorph out there, but can't. He's just under so much pressure right now. Really doesn't want to use that other block. He, he wants to save that for as long as he possibly can. Now Young taking a whole bunch of damage as well. Coding in a trap. Needs to get his team topped off as quickly as possible here. There's the Polymorph coming out. It does go out on a Casca. That's an interesting choice with how much damage this is. And Yun Yun has to block. Yeah, I mean, he, he wants to turn it around. They have to get CC on the Casca, but it's just not in a position really to go for that. Blinks forward, and Young now is the one taking the pressure. Coding just falling way too far behind. HLS is just dominating this WMD right now. We see Young down low. Yun Yun down low as well. Coding really low on mana. Has no PvP trinket. The scatter comes in. Will the trap be able to land? No, but may not even matter. Yun Yun down to 100k. This could be it. The Shadow Fear connects onto Coding. Do they have the CC to follow it up? MCS on Maldiva prevents the howl. Nicely done by Yun Yun. Keeping his Druid out of that CC. Maybe the only reason they're still alive right now, but they need to turn it around. When are they going to do it? We do see the palm ring comes down. It's going to land onto Casca. Casca will sit through this. This Yun Yun is just being pushed back way too hard to get the damage out. Now, though, Maldiva forced to port. Dorothy into the sheep. They're starting to get something going a little bit. Casca once again sheep back up. We see Maldiva down below half. Will they be able to get anything done here? Yun Yun going to trick it. He wants to stay offensive. Maldiva going to get an MCS, but now they don't have the interrupt for Casca. Casca still struggling to top Maldiva back off. Coding seems to have stabilized, but his mana is really hurting. At the same time, though, Casca having to spend so much of his own mana, not able to use those efficient heals because of this offensive surge. And Yun Yun has four icicles. He's looking to set it up. Five icicles now. Maldiva could be in trouble. Yeah, definitely tons of damage coming out from both sides. This is very, very back and forth, edge of your seat sort of stuff right now. Stormbolt comes out. Young trying to put as much damage in as he can. Dorothy dipping really, really low into the deep freeze. Stock Shockwave as well, so low. He needs to be able to get out of there. He already used his deterrence, and he's going to be able to stabilize here uh, for just a second. But the disarm comes out, slowing down that damage as well. Push, push, it's starting to turn this around. Yeah, and I mean, there, there is the... the scatter coming out of that wyvern there was a trap off of that as well so i mean so much cc over on a coating but he's able to sit through it all for now maldiva now the orb out onto him they're trying to push him back once more uh coating doing a great job maintaining at the low mana has been his signature throughout this tournament iron bark up on a yun yun he's trying to get something going here but he is really struggling now the blink into the deep freeze on a casca ring of france is going to land onto him and what can they get done to, to uh, maldiva here still casca sitting with his pvp trinket maldiva with his as well nice shadow free over on a young he's pulling back kiting well here may decide to use the port he does as the intercept comes out though. Maldiva gonna get caught into the shockwave. Yun Yun blinking over, trying to look for the sheep, not able to get it just yet. That one was grounded. Now the Wyvern over onto Coding. Yun Yun may have to be blocking here. He's down very low. Temporal is up, but I don't know if it's gonna be enough. Coding sitting through this. Yun Yun doesn't want to block either. But wow. now the trigger is gonna have to come out as the Howl comes in and the ice block is used. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Looking at both healers' mana so far, we're only 4% into dampening. They're already so low. This match will not go on for much longer. Somebody's going to run out here very, very soon. There's a full sheep on the Casca. He's holding his trinket. He feels comfortable right now. Silence on him, Maldiva. Uh, looks like he's going to be okay. That was a good choice by Casca to sit through that sheep. Uh, but now he's into a full cyclone. Uh, things are looking very scary for Maldiva at the moment. Definitely. I mean, Casca is still, though, holding on to his trinket. So is Maldiva, so that is key. Dorothy, though, without his trinket, we saw the burst potential that they do have over onto him, and they are looking at him now. They know he doesn't have that trinket. They need to get a burst kill, and when are they going to go for it? Coding down to 60k. Shockwave comes in. This could be the burst that they're looking for onto Dorothy. The Ice Lance has come crashing in. Deep Freeze to follow that up. This could be it. Will he go down? 40k feet. Nice charge off of that. Look at that CZ chain. This stun out of the stun. Three in a row onto Dorothy, almost finishing off before the deter. The Link has to come oh, down. Casco using his trinket as well. All three 
three are now low. How is this WMD turning it around? Gunyon in trouble. He's going to get caught into the into the cross trap. That actually uh, removes all the dots off of him. Coding now going to get scattered up into the fear. He's stuck in this. They need to keep the pressure going, though. Cask is very low on mana. Maldiva low as well. The MCS comes over onto him. He can't pour it out just yet. He's trying to finish off Young, but he's going to pop the shield while he wants to stay aggressive. And Casca is spending the last of his mana to heal him back up. Ascendance is up, but he has nothing left. Maldiva is so low, he still didn't get a gateway this whole game. Shockwave comes in. That's Maldiva's string and gone. What do they have for Casca? Can they follow it up by Nyan Nyan? He's trying to get the ring down. Not going to connect just yet. And now Dorothy into the sheep, out of the storm bolt. MCS on Maldiva once again. Deep freeze on Casca, looking for the sheep. He does get it. That's the full sheep, but Young is low as well. The, the heart of the wild uh, tranquility coming up from coding. Howl's going to be tricked by Yun Yun. Maldiva dangerously low. A reach sheep comes out on Casca. Will this be it? The orb coming out. 100k, 70k, 40k. He may go down. He falls. And the Koreans, against all odds, are going to strike first. They take the game, killing off Maldiva. And look at the excitement on their faces. What an amazing uh, coordination there towards the end. I mean, just playing fantastically throughout the whole game but the key was Maldiva never got a gateway and I feel like that is just such a huge mistake I mean yes he got interrupted but in a game that long you need to commit to getting the gate off you need to kite away port back pop your demon soul even for the haste uh, to get that gateway down I mean think about how close that game was he didn't have a gate that's like yeah. the most important defensive thing that yeah, a warlock it has it really was and what was really impressive for me is Young was able to put out that amount of pressure Young Young obviously set it up for him but that was after his recklessness was down he had no cooldowns towards the end when they were uh, putting all that pressure out. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And that is why uh, this team is one that, this push-push team, is one that everybody has been just talking so much about backstage. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at a replay to see, the once again, the last few moments from that game. And yeah, here it is. Just look at that setup. Yeah, so we can hear the green team here. Look how low Yun Yun is, but he knows he's safe. The communication is there, and they are going aggressive. There's the deep freeze into the sheep onto Casca. Maldiva getting so low here, and they know they can finish it off. We do see just uh, so much damage coming into him. The trinket even used on Shadow Fury there by Yun. Coding, popping the Heart of Wild Tranquility, keep his team offensive. Just the communication, you can hear it. You don't need to know what they're saying to know uh, how, how, how talkative these guys are, to know, you know the level of coordination and communication that they have is, is just astounding. And, um, you know, interesting also to see that Maldiva, you know, he did do the most damage in the game, but but Young was right up there. He was a neck and neck, you know, barely yeah. did less than, than the most damage in the game. And I mean, uh, for a warrior, a single target to be putting out that much pressure, you know, uh, versus, versus uh, you know, a warlock here who has, has four targets, basically. I mean, he is able to dot the water alley uh, as well as the three players. So, you know, the amount of pressure that Young is putting out is just insane. And, and a lot of that really does come down to the fact that um, Maldiva, you know, he's not able to, to kite as well. He's not able to stay as safe because he didn't have that gateway. So, you know, with the map pick coming out, I feel like on the back of that game they're going to pick one where they can get a guaranteed gate which i have a feeling it's going to be just talking over it right now it sounds like uh it is going to be runes of Lordaeron going into it i mean that's a great pick for hls yeah, I mean, it definitely does give them that guaranteed gateway, but uh, we have to also remember that this, this green team is very adaptable. They can switch up the strategies, and, you know, just because they sat on the Warlock and the Hunter that game doesn't mean that they can't rush down your Shaman, and this is this is the hardest map to survive as a healer. Uh, you know, so WMD also is one of the best healer-killing teams. Uh, you, know, you have Deep Freeze in a Shockwave. We saw how well they coordinated some of those stuns onto Dorothy, almost killing him without without being able to deter. They had uh, a Deep Freeze into the Shockwave, into the Charge stun, you know, no overlap whatsoever everything yeah. perfectly placed perfectly timed so you know if you have that kind of level of coordination on a shaman if you can force out his trinket then swap to him or even sometimes just ride and start to finish it yeah. can be extremely hard to survive on runes lord run yeah absolutely beautiful to see the way that that cc chain works and just the way that they were able to turn that last game around but this is going to be death innovators pick uh so we'll see what they can do on this map they must feel pretty comfortable on it uh to to actually choose it into the team that just beat them so this is going to be starting very very shortly here push push up one game against death innovators here we go, game number two. All right, guys, let's hear it for these two teams. We have the Koreans, Push Push, looking to push their advantage against Death Innovators, your North American team. And there we go, gateway straight from the start. Going to be really hard, if not impossible, 
to interrupt that and he's able to get it off. That's going to be a huge difference from the last match. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely does get that out there. Dorothy already taking a little bit of damage over here. Uh, and Casca into the deep freeze already as well. Into the sheep, into the fear. Uh, definitely overlapping a ton of CC there. May have been a little bit of a miscommunication, but this early in the game, uh, I don't know that it's a huge issue. Maldiva actually taking a ton of damage out of this as well. Push Push is just going for it. They are they are being super aggressive yeah. in this match. I mean, with the sheep and fear overlap, they actually did force a trigger from Dorothy, though, because Casca couldn't chime her being in that sheep, so was very nice there. And they do have an opportunity to swap to Dorothy now if they decide. Do, but now the sheep thrown over into him. Yun Yun, once again under pressure, coding has trinketed. He's using the early heart of the wild, wants to keep his team aggressive. Maldiva being forced back somewhat. Another deep freeze onto Casca. Full sheep comes out. Clone over onto Dorothy. They have the 3v1 setup onto Maldiva, but it doesn't look like they can connect just yet. Now the shockwave over onto Dorothy. They're going to swap it up. We see the sheep coming out once again on Casca. He's out of that though, has sat through it. He is okay to heal his team right back up, and coding is really starting to struggle. The scatter comes in. Young getting low. Will the wall have to come out? Doesn't look like it just yet. Yun Yun able to eat the trap. Well played by him, but the Howl will connect on too. Young could be in trouble. Now the wall does have to come out. He cannot afford to fall too, too low. Although he's using a high HP, I think it is the right choice here. Wyvern to follow that up on the coding. He's not really being able to play at all right now. The ring going to come out on the Casca. It actually whipped. He missed it, and that is huge. Yun Yun making a big mistake there. It could cost him massively, as Casca now going to be able to free cast here. Uh, no ring available. Dorothy does walk into it, unfortunately, but a sentence has been popped, and Casca going to be able to keep Maldiva alive as Yun Yun gets forced into the block. Yeah, just Super low there for a second. Actually waited a second uh, even to use that ice block. So very, very dangerous situation for Yun Yun. Uh, now the silence coming on to Maldiva. They're going to try and turn this around. And this is what happened last game, too. Uh, push Push started off kind of on the back foot, but they were able to turn around. Young now taking a ton of damage over here. Does have that scenario Ward and the Iron Bark on him. That's going to be able to keep him alive for now. But uh, they're running out of cooldowns. Push Push does not have many big buttons left to push. Oh, they, the, the CC chains on the coding are brutal this match. Yeah, yeah. Cas Casca is going to be put into the full sheep. That is the sheep fear that they are looking for, so the tremor can knock him out. Dorothy's going to be feared up. Uh, Maldiva going to be forced to trinket. He's down to half HP. Resheep comes out. Now look at the clone on Dorothy. There's the trinket from him. And we just see the MCS to fall. A beautiful cross. You see, this is incredible play. The heals coming up from Maldiva. Will it be enough? Now the deep freeze. That's going to be the trinket and the link. Look at this cross you see from this WMD. Just giving a master class on how to coordinate as a team right now, playing out of their minds. Yeah, so absolutely. Casca's trinket forced out of that, but we see the Dark Soul dots coming out from Maldiva right now, but Coding doing a great job of keeping his team clean throughout the entire match. Yeah, and Coding does have his trinket still too, and that interdate coming out, uh, so he should be uh, relatively safe for the time being. Uh, he has been like standing sort of out in the open, which is opening him up to a ton of CC, but now we see him down here uh, in this opening area here, uh, which will help him a lot with being able to stay out of line of sight of all that crowd control. Yeah, there's the deep freeze on Takaska, though. They're going to look for the sheep. This could be the, the kill that they're looking for. MCS on Maldiva, he can't board just yet. And we do see they're going to be swapping over onto Dorothy. Disarm over onto him. Battle Stance comes out. But Yun Yun decides to pull back, doesn't want to risk it. Coding was sitting through the Wyvern, and they are going to be able to survive with that, though. But look at the, look at the PvP trinkets across the board. All the Koreans do have theirs. No one on Death Invaders has their PvP trinket. So pushing forward here, uh, it's going to be tough for Casca as he's put in the Shockwave. Maldiva is going to be put in the Shockwave as well. Nice bouncing shot there from, uh, from Dorothy to be able to break up that sheep that was coming out. That could have been the game. Young getting pretty low here, though. Has to go into defensive. Now, once again, into battle. Really trying to push the pressure up here onto Dorothy, who's down below half HP. Casca still going to be fully cloned up. This could be trouble for Dorothy. We may have to see the deter coming out. Not just yet, though. He's at 250k. Maldiva walks into the ring. He's going to be caught in that for now. Deep freeze onto Casca. Can there be a sheep to follow that up? Yes. There now, the sheep does connect. MCS onto Maldiva. Fear onto Dorothy. Look at this cross. You see, just insane play. But unfortunately, the sheep is broke early by something. A re-sheep does come out from Yun Yun. He's still under pressure, coding in the background, has his trinket into the wyvern. Trap gonna come off of that. Can Yun Yun eat it? He is able to. No, he's not. My mistake, coding gonna be caught in the trap. Yeah, and it's interesting to look at the healer mana so far, coding at half and Casca almost at full, but it almost doesn't matter because when it, when it comes, comes time for Push Push to do some damage, Casca doesn't get to cast any spells. They've been doing so fantastic with that CC, but now Young in a little bit of trouble here, trying to do some damage to Maldiva, but dipping pretty low himself. Does have his trinkets, both trinkets now active. The Scenarian Ward will come out, but he's going to get uh, disarmed on top of both of those trinkets, not able to do the damage that he really, really wants to there as the Tranquility now comes out from coding. Yeah, that fast trank healing for so much. 
Coding doing a great job of playing the LOS on the stairs as he is going to try to make things happen for his team, keeping them offensive. I like that he's been dispelling it so often. Dorothy getting pretty low right there. Casca able to pump out some huge heals onto him. Uh, the gateway has been really the saving grace for this team so far. Yeah, absolutely. And dampening is now beginning to set in. Only at 1% so far, but it will ramp up very, very quickly. As we've seen, Casca now in a storm bolt. Deep freeze onto Dorothy. He's dipping really, really low. He could go down right here. No, the deterrence does come out at the last possible yeah. second. Just barely able to keep himself alive there with that cooldown. Uh, just that was a very, very scary moment there for Dorothy. It does cost Casca his trinket though, and this was a problem for Dorothy in the last series. Popping the deters too late is something he cannot afford to do. They need to prioritize Casca's trinket above all else. And now not having that, I mean, it doesn't matter if he has uh, his trinket if his shaman gets CC'd out. And now the sheep comes in. There's a fear on Maldiva, three v one setup. Dorothy gonna have to trinket here as well. Young gonna be the one who has to shield, although his coding is put into the howl tear from Maldiva. The orb out on Maldiva though. He's out of range of his port. He's in some trouble. He's trying to pull back. Deep freeze over on the Casca. Can they get this damage rolling, though? Young being pushed back. Young Young taking some damage as well. The Sheep over on a Dorothy is going to be dispelled off by Casca very quickly. Maldiva still sitting half HP. Young down to 200k, though. Really great pressure coming out right now from Death Innovators. Doing a good job spreading around the dots as Maldiva. And great CC has been coming out of Dorothy on to Coding. They're looking to get the kill here. They can't do it just yet, though. Coding going to pop the NS. Innervate dropped as well. Maldiva dangerously low, though. Has the life to have at 200k. Catches a big kill from Casca, but he's caught into the storm bolt now. Can Yun Yun push forward? He wants to do it, but he doesn't feel comfortable to do so just yet. Cody yeah. pretty low on mana right now. Must be a while on its innervate because he is doing a great job of keeping his team up right now. See so the explosive shot onto Yun Yun. You can tell that they are going to be switching it back and forth from Young and Yun Yun. Yeah, yep. there's a scatter over onto Coding. Yun Yun getting down to about half HP. Scatter into the Wyvern. He's going to look for the trap off of that. Will he be able to land it? He is able to land it. And that costs the block from Yun Yun. Casca, though, you know, spending quite a bit of mana himself. He's down about half. Coding very low, though. He does drink it. He's into the Shadow Fury now. Shockwave is going to connect. We do see Stormbolt over onto Maldiva. Fear onto Yun Yun. Great CC and pressure from the Death Innovators. They're looking to battle back here. They know they need to keep this damage going because at any time, the WMD can turn it around. Yeah, absolutely. They are definitely starting to turn this down around a bit as both Coding and Young now do not have their, their PvP trinkets available. Yun Yun still does, and of course he can blink out of stuns as well, so he'll be kind of okay for the moment, but he's so squishy. He's used his block uh, relatively recently, and I don't believe he had, no, he does not have his deep freeze, or excuse me, his cold snap up uh, to be able to use that again in a hurry if he needs to. Casca, though, into the deep freeze, into the polymorph. Tons of damage coming out on Maldiva here. Uh, they're, they're going for the kill. They need to make something happen here very, very soon, and it's obvious that they want to. They're putting out so much pressure right now. Now the Cyclone on the Casca. Uh, we do have the trap coming out, the Wyvern into the trap, but he is going to be able to get broken out of that. Maldiva dipping super low. Oh, the Link does come out. Uh, that's going to keep him alive for now, but Casca having to work but super Maldiva hard. Maldiva has the tap. Alive. Look at look at his HP and look at his mana. He can't even do anything right now. He needs the tap, but Casca can't heal him back up. There's the Deep Freeze. This may be the trinket. Healing cooldowns coming out from Maldiva. The ring is going to try to land on the Casca. It does connect. That's the trinket now from Casca. Still so far, he gets sheeped instantly on his trinket. Nice job there by Yonion. The Howl coming out, trying to stay alive as Maldiva, but the clone to follow it up. This could be it. Maldiva in so much trouble, still needs a tap. Shockwave comes in. He's so low. Is he going to go down? The disorienting roar on the Casca from Coding. 100k HP. Gates out of there. Casca's not there, though. He's going to go down. The Koreans take two. Casca leaves the game instantly. And they are up against the wall now. Push, push is showing what they are made of. And look how happy they are with that win. That was one that. Uh, they used everything. The uh, Death Innovators used everything that they could, even the gateway. They did have the gateway down that time. Yeah. You gated out of there, but if you gate out at 50k health with a warrior on your tail the entire time, it, you can only go so far, and uh, it wasn't far enough. He was not able to, to stay alive there, got too far away from his healer, and just couldn't couldn't survive any longer. There was a real difference to me on this on this uh, Death Innovator between the beginning of the match and the end in terms of the, the coordination of the cooldowns and Casca was trying to hold his trinket for so long but it looks like there was just a disconnect between what was going on between the DPS. Maldiva did a great job of, of porting back himself but he, he still wasn't able to top himself off and then leading to the point where he had zero mana going into yeah. that. And I mean, that's one of those things that you have to look back further in the game because at that point, yes, you can't tap, but you have to find the times when you are behind the pillar with your shaman. If you're low on mana, you're full on HP, you tap the full mana to avoid those situations. Uh, because, you know, when you get caught with no mana, it, life tap is devastating. Yeah. It, you know, it, it's, it's doing 100 to 200,000 damage to you. I mean, you're, the, the life totals are so high right now. So uh, we are going to go into a replay at the end of this game, but you'll see, you know, Maldiva, really with no mana left here, Casca is going to get sheeped on his trinket right there immediately out of that ring. And, you know, 
Maldiva, Maldiva forced to run here. The clone coming out on Tasca. The CC changes does not end. Coding on top of him. So Maldiva has no choice but to run. But we can see the disorienting war there now. He gates out, but Tasca unable to get to the gateway. And this warrior coming in hot pursuit. The heroic leap comes in. Reckless is popped. There's just no chance for Maldiva there getting finished off. Yeah, and even the sheep, the last second sheep, which was trinketed by Dorothy, but it slowed him up just for a second to make sure that there wasn't going to be any sort of... Uh, obviously, he was running Wyvern that, that, yep. that game, but there wasn't going to be any sort of anything that was going to be able to stop them from, from getting that kill. Uh, so we are going to get into this next match here very, very shortly. It looks like it's going to be a Dalaran Sewers pick uh, coming out of Death Innovators. And it's a great pick. I think that they can uh, really do a great job with this. Hunter can make a lot of things happen on this map, uh, especially playing as survival, as he's not choosing to uh, swap it up at all. Uh, Dorothy's been doing a great job at playing survival so far, uh, really putting the pressure out you know, with those dots. Um, and we've seen a bunch of great CC chains on decoding. There were times during that match where the CC just wasn't ending at all yeah. on him. Yeah. I mean, just look at the faces of these two teams. The Koreans laughing, joking around, having fun. You can see the stress, the pressure kind of mounting here on Death Innovator's faces, you know, they're, 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 they know they're up against it. They have to win three in a row now, and, you know, yeah. it's such a, a mental advantage uh, for the Korean team, and the games are going to be opening up here. It's two to zero for Push Push right now. Death Innovators have to win three straight. Will they be able to do it? We'll find out as we do follow Maldiva out the gate. He's looking to get that gateway, but he's going to get stopped on the gateway. Uh -oh. A repeat of game one. Will he be able to get one off this time? He needs to focus on that. Cost is going to be MCS. The Palm Ring does come out. Will it land? It does land. Maldiva already in some trouble. He's, the orb comes out as well. They're getting aggressive. Clone over onto Dorothy. Uh, Costa's still sitting through that. Maldiva down to half HP. Walks into the ring, unfortunately. Sheep over onto Costa again. Maldiva's still so low. Has no gate. Rexus has been popped. They're going to swap it over onto Dorothy. Disarm over onto him. Maldiva uh, is not going to be able to get pummeled there. He does fake that interrupt. Nicely done by him. Costa will pop his Bjorker's Grace, but it looks like they're okay, and they're turning around to Young. Yeah, Young taking a bunch of damage here. The Die by Sword does come out, as well as the Stampeding Roar to be able to break him out of those things. The Stormbolt does go on Maldiva. That's trinketed instantly. He wants to continue doing as much pressure as he possibly can. Uh, Coding doing a good job of trying to stay back out of line of sight over here, uh, sort of sitting by the stairs there, jumping back and forth. Uh, so just trying his best to make sure he can keep his team alive without getting caught into any CC. Casca actually popping Ascendance there. I, yeah. I didn't think he was in too bad of a shape. I'm curious about that, that choice to use that. Yeah, use the, uh, the NS with that as well. So, you know, really, I guess, just wanting to try to keep his team aggressive. Uh, push the pace, but he's going to get deep. The ring is going to come out after that. It should land. No, uh, just not actually be able to get that off. Young Young did get interrupted on the ring, so nicely done there. Maldiva going to pour it out. Needs to go for the gateway now. He's going to go for it. He sees the opportunity. He gets it. That's big for uh, Death Innovators. But Young Young getting so, so low down 100k. Will he have to block here? He does as Coding goes into the Wyvern. Out of that now, but that is one major cooldown for Maldiva, though, still didn't take the opportunity to tap back up. Look at his mana once again. This is something that adds so much more pressure to your team when you're having to tap up well in combat. He's down to half HP. He has no mana. He's going to have to tap here, uh, and his HP is going to spike. We'll see how they're going to be able to deal with this as he gets locked out. The warrior, will he be able to get right back to him? Young going to jump right onto him. There's a deep freeze on a Casca. Fear over on a Dorothy. Such nice cross DC as always from these Koreans. The shockwave to follow that up connects on both the DPS. Casca's trying to get over to Maldiva. He's going to get full sheep, though. Maldiva out in the middle of the map. He's going to port back. Does have the gateway available. Uses the port sprint, uh, but, you know, I really want to see him tap up, take these opportunities to do it. Yeah, and it's, it's really awesome to see them actually using the deep freeze on Casca. A lot of teams in this situation, having dipped Maldiva so low, would think to themselves, no, we need the extra damage on the kill target. We need to be getting those big ice lances out. And so they would do that instead. But uh, if they would make that switch, then Casca would just be healing the entire time. So really, really good play. Coming out of push push, Young dipping low, Yun Yun dipping low as well. It's going to get top back off there. Maldiva now in a whole lot of trouble. He's actually having to resummon his pet. Uh, is not able to at the moment, but he will I, get top back I think he actually off. just... I think he actually just port sprinted by accident. I, I don't know if he has any or shards. I don't even know if he can instant summon out a pet. Young Young getting very, very low here. Young going to trigger it offensively, though. They're looking for the kill. Now the uh, shard does come out, so he's going to summon out that Voidwalker. We'll have that available. That is big for him. Going to have the soul link back up once again. It's very hard to kill off the Void as well. Uh, the Iron Bar coming out on the Young Young, though. Coding has no trigger available. He's going to displace her back to the pillar, trying to keep Young Young alive. Will he be able to do it? There's the Wyvern on a Coding. Young Young getting very low. Scatter uh, the trap going to come out for that. Nicely played by Dorothy. Death Innovator pushing forward here, getting Gurr. They do force out another block from Yun Yun, and I don't believe he's going to have any more for a little bit of time. No, he has a while on that so far, you know, having to block earlier. As we do see the Stormbolt onto Dorothy, this cross CC is impeccable by Push Push. 
Yeah, they did have the deep freeze on Casca there. Nothing to follow it up with this time, but Maldiva now in that shockwave, taking a bunch of damage. There's the full CC onto Casca. He does have his trinket. He's choosing to sit in this polymorph right now. I think that's a good choice as it, it seems to be working out well for him here. Maldiva is a little bit low, but not in too terrible shape. Dorothy, though, taking a whole ton of damage. Oh. Gonna have to pop that deterrence to keep himself alive. Yeah, down at 70k, the late deter from Dorothy, you know, almost cost him the series there. He's gonna stay alive, though, uh, but Young getting aggressive onto Maldiva, but Maldiva really needs to take the time to tap up when he's behind the pillar, man. It's, it's just a constant problem. He's always oomed. Casca into the deep freeze. Maldiva, you know, low on mana here, is gonna be pulling back. We'll see if it, if it comes into play at all. Uh, the orb out there onto Dorothy. They're trying to turn it around onto this hunter. He does have his trinket, though. He has a second deter. Casca holding onto his trinket as well. Death Innovator's doing pretty well here in this game. Shockwave gonna connect on two, though. Maldiva now the target down to half. Casca is gonna pop the ascendance. He's gonna try to top them both back off. Shadow Fury connects on three. Nicely played by Maldiva there. Gonna get the Fear on a coating as well. Young can go down here, 100k. He's in the second win range, but will it help him out enough? Coding, desperately trying to top his warrior back off. He will be able to do it for now. In comes the deep. The ring is, is gonna connect. No, he actually is not able to get it. The sheep does come out. Dorothy with no trinket. Maldiva taking damage, does board out of there. Now he's gonna tap up a little bit. And uh, Young has been cleaned of the dots. Coding, starting to top his team back off. But Dorothy constantly keeping the pressure going. Maldiva gates out of there. Co uh, Casca is in the, into the clone. And if the CC continues, they could be in trouble. Dorothy down so, so low. 70k does get the deter. They're gonna swap it over on Maldiva. Both players sitting dangerously low. Shadow Fairy comes out. That's triggered by Young. They want to get a kill. Yeah, that's the last deterrence for Dorothy as well. So if they keep doing that, uh, he could be in a lot of trouble. Maldiva also in a lot of trouble, though. This is just so much damage. Coming out from Push Push, there's the Storm Bolt. Maldiva trinkets that instantly. There's the Deep Freeze on a casket, which is also trinketed. And the Link comes out, but they're all so low. The Link can't do so much. Healing surges like crazy coming out from Casket. He's having to burn through his mana to be able to keep people alive. Coding does get a Tranquility off in the middle of that. Yun Yun taking a bunch of damage over here. Uh, I don't think he has his Ice Block back yet, so he does need to be very, very careful dropping that, uh, that Ring of Frost and getting that polymorph out onto Dorothy just to slow down that damage a little bit. Oh, the Wyvern comes out onto Coding right now. Yon Yon's still looking good. That Temporal is up. He's looking to turn it around directly onto Maldiva. Uh, Maldiva down to half with the Imp counter spell onto Casca. So Maldiva in the stun too. But look at Yon's health having to die by the sword and rally. Yeah, almost went down there, down to 70k HP. Uh, very close to a kill there for Ma Maldiva, but he's getting low himself. There's no drinking on Casca. If they can get the CC over onto him, they could finish this game off, perhaps. Maldiva does pop the Dark Regen, though. Healing cooldown's coming out. Young still under heavy pressure, but he's not going defensive. He knows they need to push the pace, and they're doing just that. And now, the Frost Bolt's coming out from Yun Yun, stacking up those Icicles. Once again, he's up to five. He's gonna look for the damage. Who are they gonna go on? Deep Freeze on Casca, looking for that ring. He's gonna get interrupted. Now he's going for the Poly. The MCS Poly comes out. Maldiva's MCS. He can't He's taking quite a bit of damage. The orb comes out. Maldiva getting spiked low, but Yun Yun's even lower. Does he have a block available? It does. Ooh. Just barely getting that off, but Coding's in the Wyvern. He has a lot of work to do. Can he actually catch back up? Now the trap. Beautiful CC from Dorothy. And now the scatter comes out. I don't think it's going to be enough. I don't know if he can keep his team alive here. 70k HP from Young. I think he's going to go down. No! Oh. Coding keeping him alive. Uh, he's somehow, some way. And now a beautiful fear catches two uh, from Young. And they had the MCS on Casca, so he could not tremor. Nice cross CC once again, but a great shadow fury catches both the DPS by Maldiva. He's looking to turn things around. He knows he needs to. Alter coming back up, though, looking for the kill. Maldiva down to 200k, 100k. Will he go down? The roar comes over onto Dorothy. He's been cloned up as well by Coding. Coding getting aggressive with the last of his mana. He has the heart available. He knows his team needs to get a kill. Will they be able to do it, though? The scatter coming out onto Coding. Can Dorothy get the trap of that? No, not just yet. But the Wyvern follows up immediately. Coding is in trouble right now, sitting that CC followed by the trap and the fear that were overlapped. Young down to half, having to shield wall right there. And look at the health on Death Innovator. Casca spending all his mana to keep up. But look, the trinket out of Young, getting so low. Cut. Wow. Caught him cast in that cap stun. Yeah, and you can see Meltzer <laughs> popped up there, gets that kill. They're going to notch one for the North American team. And I mean, that was a full kill through almost the entire duration oh, of shield was, wall. So you know, yeah. the amount of pressure that they were putting out there at the end was insane. Young was Pressured heavily start to finish. Uh, you know, Coding just did not have enough. Fantastic CC, you know, in the final moments there by Dorothy and Maldiva, and just able to punish Young so hard with the damage. And I mean, he had the show all up. Uh, I'll be interested to see if we have the replay to see if he was in Battle Stance or not. You know, maybe we can follow him in that replay. I'm not sure, but, um, you know, I was just shocked that he actually went down because he shielded right, quite early. Damage, yeah. Even though coding did sit, I mean, that was that was almost 20 seconds CC yeah. at that point. It was just extremely long. We saw the fear overlapped with the trap, the scatter, you know, starting with the wyvern. It was crazy just the amount right at the end. I thought Young was going to be fine during that.
Yeah, we do have a replay that we're going to take a look at here very, very shortly. Uh, looking like Death Innovators maybe has uh, figured out how to beat this this WMD composition. So um, I believe we're going to get that replay here for you guys in just yep. a second. Uh, there it is. Yeah. We can uh, hear the guys talking about it. Uh, they are looking for the kill on Young, and you know he is, he does have no haunts as, as you did say, Jared. And the, the, we can hear them yelling for the kill. The Shatterfree came out, and I mean the Soul Drain was there. You can hear the team pretty pumped up, and and yeah, just no haunts on him uh, from coding. It was just CC'd completely out. You know, Casca and, and Dorothy cleaning him of those haunts as well. Um, you know, getting getting those purges down. So doing a good job with that, and. Honestly, you know, a pretty impressive game from Death Innovators. You know, to be down 2-0, the pressure's on. You know, they've had a tough series, but they battle back. They take that game. Uh, you know, do you think that will be the catalyst to help them turn the, turn the game around? They still have to win two more in a right. row, and, and we're going to the Koreans' map picks. And this wasn't... That wasn't a landslide victory in that no. map either. It, it was great CC chains. Dorothy setting it up for his team. You know, Maldiva having some trouble at the beginning, like we said before. Um, so they have to... I mean, I would hope the Koreans are going to choose a close map to deny the gateway again yeah. because that's really been putting the momentum in their favor early game. Definitely has it. I mean, the, the big difference between the first game and that game was that Maldiva did actually take the time to get the gateway later on in the game. And I think, you know, on the grand with how close that was, if he had done that, I think they could have maybe taken the grand as well. Um, but, you know, he, he did a great job. You know, when he had the time to get away, he poured it out of there with the Demon Soul active, or Dark Soul rather, I guess. But I'm still so used to calling it Demon Soul. <laughs> Me but, too. <laughs> uh, but I mean, you know, with, the, with extra haste, it allowed him to get that off. And, yeah. you know, getting that gateway w w was key for them. You know, they were able to use it a lot. And, you know, it's something that you really need to prioritize as a warlock. Like sometimes it, it is easy to kind of just get frustrated. You get interrupted on the first one, you get interrupted on the second one. It's, it's easy to kind of give up, but you have to think, you know, this is a long game and, and you need that. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's just pivotal to being able to survive. Yeah, and even if you only ever end up using it once, that one time could save your life uh, and, and win you the game. Um, so I am curious to, as to which map they're going to end up picking. Like you say, a, another close map would be pretty good for Push Push here, but uh, we've already played Ruins. Uh, and we've already played, uh, obviously, the sewers, sewers. And the Grand, so... And the Grand, yeah. Could be Tizer's Peak, that's yeah. fine, I guess. Yeah. I mean, that would be pretty good. Getting the gateway, uh, stopping the gateway at the start, you know, they do have the uh, the possible LOS, so they have to kind of gamble which yeah. way the, the Warlock's going to go yeah. with it. But I think they can, you know, as long as they can interrupt it right from the start, they should be okay. Yeah. Yeah, a good um, heroic leap in off the warrior into a, a storm bolt. If you do it at the right angle, you can catch him even behind the pillar, depending on where he's standing. But it would be very, very tricky to actually pull that off. Yeah, I mean, you definitely can. You can get a guaranteed gateway on that on the map as a warlock, but only if you're willing to go to the kind of the side gate or right. do it from further back. You know, you can do it when, basically just from right from your interest, uh, entrance. But it kind of the problem is the exit of the gateway ends up somewhere more near the middle of the map, and you really ideally want to have it pillar to pillar. Yeah, because uh, that does allow you to hop right out of the gateway, get out of LOS on the other side. So you know you. Can get a gateway guaranteed, but it's not going to be maybe the perfect gateway. Right. So you know you have to decide as a warlock, you know, the risk versus reward. Right. Do I go for that perfect gateway? Do I trust you know Dorothy to be able to get it out there, land a scatter, the grounding come down for the CS? That, that's the kind of stuff that they need to do to guarantee that kind of safer gateway, the, the better gateway. Um, but if they're not confident that they're going to be able to stop you know Young and uh, and Yun Yun from coming in and, and interrupting that gateway, then they need to just take. The kind of yeah. safer one. I think and, they and have wait to take the safe one, right? And I think that Mel Deben really needs to uh, identify the fact that they are doing nothing at the beginning of the map except for preventing him from using yeah. that gateway. We saw so many CCs going out onto him. A Stormbolt used on him instead of yeah. Casca to interrupt it again. So um, I think he should go for the the easy gateway and then replace it once he can. Yeah, we haven't actually gotten the the final map pick yet. I, I agree with you guys. It's probably going to be uh, Tiger's Peak, but we are are still oh. waiting for. Oh wow! wow. What do you think about choice. this? Okay, so it's this a total run. I mean. Um, you know, to me, I, th I think it definitely makes sense as well because there's there's just different ways. It depends. All comes down to really how you want to play it. And on a map like Tolfron, I think that they're basically saying if coding stays out of CC, we're going to win the game. And uh, and you know, on a map like Tolfron, it's a lot harder for Maldiva to kind of push all the way in and get yeah. the CC onto coding. So uh, you know, I feel like coding is going to try to play a bit further back. He's only going to come in to follow up on CC. Probably not going to be the one initiating it himself. You know, he may be going in, uh, you know, out of the ring, uh, ring of frost, things like that, to try to land the clones, but. He's not going to be the one getting aggressive, probably. going to try to just stay back, avoid the CC. You know, he can eat some Hunter CC, but really doesn't want to be, uh, you know, getting feared, howled up for free by Maldiva. So, you know, if, if, his, if his warrior and his mage can keep Maldiva pushed back, uh, it's going to allow him to stay free uh, for a lot more of the game. Yeah, and I guess the other interesting thing about this map pick is that even they, they do still have uh, two games that they, yep. they can lose at this point. 
Um, so even if they don't end up winning on this map, they will still have that Tolveron, or excuse me, that Tiger's Peak to fall back on if necessary. Uh, but the game is just about to start here. Push Push versus Death Innovators. We are on to a game three here. Uh, push Push uh, looking strong in the first couple of games, but, excuse me, game four actually. Uh, push Push looking strong in the first couple of games. Was not able to take that last one. Uh, we'll see if Death Innovators can come back and, and turn this one around. Yeah, right out of the gate, you know, you're looking, looking for that gateway as he goes from the pillar to pillar, the more defensive one. Oh, just barely up. missed yeah. that storm bolt. Yeah, very close, but he is able to get that off, and that is key. That's a great gateway that he did get, pillar to pillar. It's the exact one that you wouldn't want. Uh, they're going to start things off on a Dorothy as a result. The explosive drop to knock uh, Young back, uh, just trying to get as much pressure out on him right off the bat as they can. And coding, you can see how far back he's playing. He knows he needs to avoid the CC. That's exactly what he's trying to do. Kaska into the deep freeze, ring to follow it up. Now they go on Maldiva. Maldiva taking a fair bit of damage here. Dorothy already has that to trigger as well. So is Young and Yun Yun, though. Both of them are being pushed back very hard. Heart of the Wild up here for coding. He wants to keep him alive. Beautiful Wyvern thing coming out there from Dorothy. Dorothy instantly on coding. Now the trap is going to land as well. Yun Yun may have to be uh, using his first block here if he can't get out of there. He's down to about half HP. Coding now into the scatter. If a fear comes out, it's definitely going to cost him something. But the Heart of the Wild NS enough for now to keep him from using that block. Yeah. Iron Bark used on Yun Yun right there. Uh, caught it barely. Uh, Yun Yun picked back up by those hots as you see full hots on him. You know, choosing to use that uh, mage armor, of course, during this matchup. Uh, but Yun is going to try to stay quite offensive. Actually, knowing, look at that, going into battle even though he is being attacked right there. Trying to kill off the, the pet for a bit since he doesn't have anything else to hit as now he reconnects onto Maldiva. Maldiva double trinket up with those Dark Soul, but you see the Colossus smash on him too, but not too much damage coming out. Yeah, Maldiva was looking to get a, a gateway right onto the pillar that uh, Coding's playing on, but he was able to be interrupted. Maldiva now into the CS. We see the Wyvern into the trap. Young has to pop his shield wall. He's in some trouble. He's dying through the shield wall once again. Coding has to trinket. The Shadow of Fear beautifully comes out, though. He may go down through shield wall. Down to 10k HP. Will he survive? The heal comes out. Rally and cry as well. Coding costs his trinket, though. The wall and the rally and cry. A beautiful push forward there by uh, Death Innovators. And they are saying they are not dead in this series. They are looking to battle back, but now they're playing off of their gateway. They have moved pillars. Maldiva's going to have to look for another one, or they're going to just have to give up that advantage. Yeah, even though Young obviously did not die there, that was still such a huge win for Death Innovators, being able to pull out, I think, four different cooldowns in that one little push. So uh, Push Push is going to be in a lot of trouble from here on. Dorothy taking a whole bunch of damage. Going to try and disengage out of there. Will not actually have to deterrence just yet, so good on him for, for not having to pop that cooldown. Casca keeping him alive, uh, getting it down to about half mana already. Both healers actually down around half mana, having to spend tons of it just to keep their teammates alive. Young taking a bunch of damage. Yun Yun now into that hex. He's going to get uh, dispelled out of that in a hurry, but now taking a bunch of damage as well. He's got the temporal there's, shield there's up. There's that cross though. The sheep comes out on Koska. Fear onto Dorothy, never allowing him to get that tremor off on that fear. They're making such good use of the intimidating shout. Now going to swap to Dorothy out of that. The orb is coming down from Yun Yun. They have him down to about half HP, looking for the scatter trap. It is a wyvern into the trap onto Coding. Dorothy's going to be deep frozen, though. He's holding his trinket, perhaps a little bit too greedy, getting very low. Uh, when you see the grounding drop there by Koska, Fear Orca's Grace comes out as well. No CC to follow it up. Coding, though, into the scatter. Yeah, if you're Death Innovators in this point, you need to not be super greedy with things like, uh, well, I, I guess it's still a risk either way, but uh, definitely a very, very scary moment for them there. If they lose this game, that's it. They are out. Push Push will advance. Young taking a whole bunch of damage. Uh, he's going to be okay for just a moment. Uh, coding into a full fear, though. Uh, it, full fear in travel form, actually. That's a bit scary. Young taking a bunch of damage. Hopefully coding is able to get back and heal him up here in just a second, or he could be in, in really, really big trouble here. Uh, as uh, as he actually is going to hide yeah, he catches the he catches the mushroom uh, explosion right before coding gets plucked in the wyvern. That was impeccable timing on that. Young down to half right now, get, taking a lot of damage. He doesn't have any cooldowns left right now with the scatter onto coding. No trinket. This doesn't look good for push push. No, not at all. But they are battling back. They're putting the pressure on a Maldiva who has the trinket. He sprint for us. He heals as well. Casca into the sheep. They're going to go right back onto him. They do have Rexus is active. Yeah, they're going for the kill right now. Casca into the ring. This could be it. Uh, they have the roar coming out. That's going to be the trinket link. He will survive. But what a push back by Push Push. Dorothy now into the sheep. They have the cross CC. Clone over onto Costco. They're trying to stabilize. Yeah, and look at Yun starting to play defensive right now, knowing that that recklessness forced out the trinket link as Coding is doing an excellent job of playing away from that gate. Actually, they pushed back onto the source gateway. So that's a pretty big uh, opportunity for them right now. Yeah, scatter into the shadow for you. Now the Wyvern. Great CC from Death Innovators. Coding really having a tough time. Yun Yun being pressured hard here. He's down to half HP. Catches a big Swift Man crit there, though. The Sheep onto Casca. Fear onto Dorothy. That's going to set something up for them as well. We do have the clone onto Casca now. 
Maldiva's out of mana again, and he's down to 200k. This could be it. They have a deep freeze on Akaska. The Fear is going to sit on Young, though. He doesn't have Berserker oh, no. Rage. That is huge. Wow. It's, as Maldiva lives because of that Fear onto a Warrior. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah, not something that you see every day, but that just shows how tense these moments are getting here. Yun Yun now in that Shadow Fury. He's going to have to get out of line of sight over here. Going to sit over here in this mushroom, try and heal some, heal back up. Going to be fine for now. Uh, Maldiva now back at full health, but he's so low on mana. This is, like you were saying, this is when he needs to be tapping. Casca now in that sheep. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's definitely, it's hard to call at this point. The dampening is now starting to set in, so we'll have to see where this goes. Young taking a bunch of damage once again here. Uh, I think that was a meta reflect on the deep freeze right there to Young, which is really unfortunate. Uh, Young down to half right now. Double trinket up, though, but he's having to play defensive behind the pillar as that mushroom is popped back. No, actually, he's going to hold on to it. That was really good because he knows that his team was playing defensive. There we go. Now we see the gateway swap. Uh, choosing to, Coding's doing a great job. Let's see if he decides to change pillars. Oh, look at this damage on Dorothy, though, into the deep freeze. He's in some trouble here. Young Young trying to finish him off. Young pulled back, though. Maybe a bit of a miscommunication there. You know, Young uh, was trying to pull back and stop Maldiva from fearing his root, but Young Young wanted to go for the kill, even using his trinket in the offensive barrage there. Casca, though, has a Spear Augur's Grace active, uses the Unleash, keeps his teammate alive. Coding playing max range, but also gets caught into the Wyvern. Full Wyvern right there. The trap is going to follow it up. It might be not eaten. That was close, though. He almost got it. Having to drink it, too. That was a big play. Yeah, for sure. These teams are both just going at it like crazy at the moment. Uh, just so much back and forth action. It's actually kind of hard to keep track of all of it. Dorothy now in that Stormbolt. Silence on the Casca. Does fall off. Uh, ring onto Maldiva. So uh, interesting that, the, that that's who ended up in, in that. This is, they've been trying to kill him the entire time here. Uh, trinket now down for Casca as well. Both Casca and Coding do not have their trinkets. Uh, Dorothy sitting through that polymorph. He's going to be okay for now and things are just starting to ramp up again at this point. And so now that we're at 10% dampening, we'll have to see if Coding can keep his team up. Casca's really low on mana right now, but as uh, Coding is also, but look, he still has the time to dispel those dots. Yep, definitely does, and it's, it's important that he does take the time to do that. Casca, though, you know, no trinket critically, and now there's the deep freeze. Uh, the trinket howl comes out from Maldiva trying to stop that CC chain, but the sheep does land. This could be huge. Maldiva in a lot of trouble. Once again, Oom, he needs to get out of there. The Reckless has been popped. Uh, we see Young trying to get back to him. Will he be able to get over? No, he's going to swap to Dorothy instead. A re-sheep onto Casca. Now the clone comes out. Stormbolt over onto Dorothy. Reckless is up. He may go down here. 100k, this could be the series. The deterrence comes in wow. just in time. A oh. re-clone comes out a split second too late as the link does land, but they're all under pressure. Maldiva's moved back into the middle the map and now is the target he's in trouble he still hasn't been able to find the time to tap back up he's at half hp casca trying to top them back off there's a scatter trap on a coding casca into the deep freeze do they have a cc no they do not the orb is out from young young look at young though he bumps his wall at 90k will he be able to stay up maldiva down to 200k he's trying to stay alive they pulled off their off the pillar with the gateway they moved to the wrong pillar and now he's gonna have to try to walk across the map to get there clone over on a casca maldiva down so so low he has no mana he has the heals active but the mcs on a casca 250k Maldiva. They're going to kill off the healing stream. They're going to pull back for now. The swap comes in onto Dorothy. Do they have a stun available? Not just yet. The scatter trap on the coding. No, it's going to be the freeze, uh, the, the frost trap instead. Yun Yun getting pressured hard, but this WMD so close to wow. victory there. Yeah, Maldiva barely sneaking out those empowered dots right there. You know, able to put some pressure out, but look at Dorothy taking so much damage with the MCS onto Casca. Dorothy's so low right now. Can't believe he lived through that with the, the Fane right there. Wow. Yeah, the sheep comes out. He's going to be uh, having to trigger that immediately. Dorothy with no more no more defensive cooldowns. The Roar comes in on Casca. I think this is going to be the game. Shockwave comes in. Full clone. Dorothy at 100k. Will he be able to survive? He oh does get out of there. He's running for his life. If they can connect to him, it's going to be the end. It's 70k. Rishi comes out on Casca. 17. Oh. He's dying to the bleeds. Young Young forced into the block, though. He's trying to get there. The MCS comes out. There's the charge. That's it. Push Push does it. 3 to 1. The Koreans knock out Death Innovators. You can see the smiles on their faces. They are happy. They know that so they are moving on. On. I was so surprised that Yun and Yun Yun were able to stay connected on to Dorothy during that match right at the end. You saw the disengage from behind the pillar. He even hit his first aid. You know, they're just doing everything that he can do to live. Yeah, definitely a very, very impressive match from Push Push there. A very well-deserved victory for them. They played that incredibly well. Uh, Death Innovator is just not able to keep themselves alive through that just relentless pressure coming out of that WMD.
Yeah, and I mean, just so impressive. Uh, how how well coordinated this team is. You, you yeah. basically never see overlap from them. The only overlaps we're seeing are intentional overlaps. Things like the sheep and the intimidating shout, knowing that you know he doesn't he doesn't have have the tremor available because he's stuck in the sheep. They're forcing out trinkets from Dorothy. They're forcing out trinkets from Maldiva using that intimidating shout. Whereas so many teams, you know, would just use an interrupt. They just throw it right. out. It gets tremored. It gets wasted. And you know, nothing is wasted. Nothing is overlooked here. Everything is is being perfectly chained. Uh, there's no overlap and. And they're just playing amazingly well. We do have a replay to see the final moments of this series. Uh, but Push Push, you know, they do take it 3-1 to one over Death uh, Innovators. That means their second team in, uh, eliminated. Yeah, and this was just incredible just how much Dorothy was able to, like how long Dorothy was able to stay alive here. But Casca was just not allowed whatsoever to come over here and heal him up. He's stuck in the clones, stuck in the sheep. Dorothy still stuck behind there. Even the, the uh, brain freeze. Uh, Frostfire Bolt hitting him, just not able to, to stay alive. Casca just stuck out of out of line of sight of him the entire time. Uh, very, very difficult situation to ever recover from. Uh, certainly no surprise. Oh, on that was such an exciting match. Yeah, I mean, Dorothy did a great job kiting at the end, honestly, but Living Bomb was up on him, the Warrior Bleeds were up on him, and it was just too much at the end. Uh, Casca, you know, just getting CC changed so, so well. They were able to chase him down. They sensed they had the kill. They went for it, and they are able to secure victory. Yep, so we do have uh, Zoe over on stage with our winners for the interview. Thank you, guys. And I do now have uh, the captain from Push Push here. So once more, please, a big round of applause for the winners. That was insane. That was such a big back and forth. It was such a pleasure to watch you guys playing. Uh, now, I actually want to know some stuff about the upcoming match you guys, ha uh, you guys have, because you will be playing against Playing With Fire. That is a, a god comp, and your comp should actually work really, really well against him. Do, do you guys feel like you're going to out, out, out draft almost? Like, do, do you think the comp is going to make you win the next few games, and you're going to end up in the finals due to that? 먼저 우승 축하드리고요. 그리고 다음 경기 상대인 Playing With Fire가 지금 조합이 그 저희 선 푸시 푸시 선수들이 들, 들고 온 조합이랑 볼때더 약한 조합인가는 강한 조합이지. 그래서 지금 가지고 있는 조합이 유일한 전사가 있는 조합이잖아요. 그럼 그 조합으로 우승까지 할수 있는지 궁금해서 물어봅니다. 아, 일단 화암드랑 전법드는 거의 뭐 어, 그냥 잘하는 쪽이 이기는 것 같고요. 그리고 아마 일단 흑양술 첫 경기가 조, 원래 예상은 조국술 이기고 하려고 했는데 흑양, 흑양술만 흑양술 이겨서 아마 저희가 열심히 만다며 우승도 충분히 할수 있을 것 같습니다. He believes the, the same classes that they have against other opponents. It depends on who, has, who is more skilled. It more depends on the. What, what? 뭐라고 했지? HLS. H HLS will determine who's going to win the tournament. All right. So one last question for you guys. Um, how, how did you prepare leading up to BlizzCon? Like how much hours did you actually put into that? BlizzCon을 오기 위해서 얼마만큼 준비를 했고 몇 시간 연습을 했는지 궁금한 하십니까? 어, 블리즈컨 일단 한국 예선을 한다고 하기 한 일주일 전쯤과 두 달, 세달 정도 연습했고요. 그 다음에 음, 거의 하루에 한 두세 시간 정도로 연습했습니다. Starting from the Blizzard, Blizzcon qualifiers, they started around two months ago, and every day they practice around two to three hours. All right, it really seems to pay off. You guys played absolutely amazing and can't wait to have you guys here back on stage in just a bit. Uh, but before that, of course, we have one more match to go and uh, also one more break to go. And then we will be right back with the next one.